Hello, hello. I see you have made it to part two of this conversation. Congratulations. Enter the battle of ideas at your own risk, friends. <laughs> this part is pretty interesting, I think. Again, we did agree on much more than I expected from simply hearing Chris on his show or seeing his tweets. And since we spent the bulk of our conversation falling down a Sam Harris-shaped rabbit hole, unfortunately, we didn't get to cover everything I wanted to touch upon. But we did cover all the big themes, I think. Once again, I gotta thank Chris for giving so much of his time to even hearing critique. Not many people handle upfront criticism this well, and I've seen Chris do it before. That's why I felt like we could have this conversation. Now this is the part where we get into the nitty gritty of our differences, and I think it's important because to casual listeners, all IDW criticism seems similar. But actually, there are some pretty fundamental differences even within the critical space. To sum it up, for me, the main issue in terms of differences with the more centristy segments of IDW criticism arises mostly with this um, rather unique space this type of critique occupies in that it is sort of IDW slash heterodox friendly at times while also being IDW slash heterodox critical. I can't quite wrap my head around how those things coexist effectively. I mean, I guess it certainly can serve the purpose of reaching those more entrenched within the IDW, as we did discuss, because those types perhaps wouldn't even listen to many left-wing critiques. But I worry if it works the other way too, and I have seen it happen. But yeah, I, I worry if it works in terms of reaching more progressive people who are in it for some fun, casual IDW dunking, but end up hearing some normalizing of, say, Sam or Rogan from respected IDW critics. Because even though we hear good critique on decoding the gurus, we often do hear things like, oh, I like Rogan, uh, other than the anti-vax stuff. He's a good guy with good things to offer on some topics. Or... I am similar to Sam Harris politically, or that the hosts aren't instinctively repelled by Gad Saad or Jordan Peterson. Or you might hear IDW-type phrases like, I find moral posturing on the left extremely annoying. Or one of them having sympathy for Rogan, not towing the line on progressive dogma. So those things are a bit hard for me to get on board with, I suppose. Of course, to be clear, I don't expect everyone to be a perfect judge of character at all times. We're all human, you know. Um, gosh, I mean, I am plenty flawed. I used to be a fan of Sam Harris, for fuck's sake. But while I totally get having criticism of the left from the left, I certainly have plenty of it myself, and I can absolutely see there are overzealous anti-racists and anti-all types of bigotry people on occasion, but that's not even something I would try to balance my criticism of the right or the IDW with, because one thing is so much more alarming and powerful, in my view, than the other, but I guess how differently we weigh those things just just boils down to our differences in politics and the way we view the world because of that. And also, for the record, I absolutely have no issues with analyzing rhetorical techniques and things. I do plenty of that on my own show too, but I worry when I feel like the analysis is limited to that or because of that. For instance, covering IDW figures like Rogan, mostly with a narrower focus on his anti-vax rhetoric, is missing some very important bits, I think. It's not that it isn't great and much needed, important, and warranted criticism. It's just that there's a lot more to Rogan's awfulness than that. And I guess that is a limitation of sticking to one episode or a couple episodes or whatever to criticize. But as more and more people look to decoding the gurus for a quick-ish summary of these types of figures, 
I just think it provides an incomplete picture at times and I'm not saying that everything has to be a massive deep dive into the history of each character, but a little more contextualizing is important in my view when someone is such a raging bigot in so many ways like Rogan is. Like I find that the criticism of bigotry and racism with those figures isn't focused on that often. And I think that's a huge part of them and their project and what they launder. But Chris absolutely talked about their bigotry on here, and he did call out Harris's parallels to great replacement stuff on his chat with him, which I do give huge props for. Um, and, you know, what's important information is subjective. Obviously, this is just my opinion. But I view the entire IDW and heterodox sphere as a right-wing rebranding and repackaging effort. If that through line of right-wingery is being missed with many or even some of these characters, that's a fundamental difference between us in interpretation, I think. So I don't know that we're entirely on the same page or same mission even with exposing these types, but we definitely do overlap a lot. And it's always good to clarify these things and have polite conversations about our differences and our similarities. And it can be done without much grief. It was a pretty fun conversation, actually. A couple of things I did want to touch upon that we didn't get to, and Chris might even agree with in part. It's just stuff we didn't get to cover, so I wanted to just mention it here. One is how I think... Uh, excessive wokeness, fear-mongering, and CRT panic stuff can also be in conspiracy theory territory. And two, how in my view it's not just distinctly left and right stuff that can be partisan, because I do think centrism-focused content can have its own quote-unquote red meat and play to its own type of audience and have its own biases. Yeah, so hopefully I've laid out the basics well enough here for everyone to follow along in the conversation. I added this intro after, obviously, so hopefully I haven't said anything that mischaracterizes or anything that is unfair because Chris isn't able to respond in the intro. But as always, I'd be happy to hear any issues or criticism he may have. Um, I'd be more than happy to continue the conversation and <laughs> if they are ever interested in having on a hysterical woke perspective like mine, I would be more than happy to go on. Maybe now people can stop angrily asking me in my DMs about why I won't go on or what my differences with them are. I opened my DMs for art commission stuff, but unfortunately I have had more demands for debate than art commissions. A few great art commissions, too, so I am keeping those DMs open. <laughs> anyway, if you enjoy this show, dear listeners, and would like to support it, please head on over to patreon.com forward slash nice mangoes and join us. Now, the episode. Make sure that uh, that program doesn't contain controversial subjects. And uh, you're not impolite to people. No, definitely not, Dad. You know me. I'm never, <laughs> ever controversial or yeah, impolite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Welcome to Conversations with your lovable, never pisses anyone off, ex-Muslim host, Ina. Keeping it non-controversial. Yeah, and That's also, you're not, you know... A woman, so that <laughs> there is also that really upsets people. <laughs> yeah, <That's>, uh, <laughs> my internet experience is significantly different, and plus I'm Irish, so I get uh, you know the there's there's like a degree of charity that the Irish people get throughout their their lives just because of being Irish that. Um, it's 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 unfair and shouldn't be applied to Irish people because we. <laughs> there's a lot of peril. Well, they do have interesting accents, even Northern Irish ones, but, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. despite the yeah, interesting but... accent, Chris, I, I, I do disagree with you sometimes. 
<laughs> yes, it would be a more boring world if nobody ever did. And I say a lot of things. So <laughs> indeed, I, indeed. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I, I guess we can wrap that up, the Sam portion, and now we can talk about our differences. Yeah. Yeah, that I I I'm I'm happy to all right, you know, as happy as anyone ever is mm-hmm. <laughs> to, to deal with with criticisms, but um but yeah, I'm 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 open to hear whatever uh you want to level at the the podcast on me. All right. Well, firstly, I noticed that you said in your episode that uh you know, she's not the hugest fan of us. And uh, I just mm-hmm. wondered, like, what made you say that? Because I don't think I've ever said Chris Kavanaugh sucks, and I'm not a huge fan of him. No, no, you haven't. Other people have, <laughs> but the I I think I with that I was referencing that you know I I think that we would be put like when when you had the conversation with the I don't speak German mm. guys, although they didn't reference us. I think, you know, if you're talking about people focusing on, like, the psychological issues and the kind of rhetorical mm. techniques of the IDW, um, then there's, a the, like, there's an, a clear implicit <laughs> inclusion of us. And then mm. with the stuff with Aaron and Thomas, um, although, like, I didn't even know Thomas at, at that point, but the, the it, we are friendly with, like, Aaron, and he's been on the podcast so it felt that not all of those criticisms you know that the people i don't think we were getting lumped in with you know the the new atheist or yeah, that kind I of don't, thing yeah but, that, i don't think i ever even thought of you in that yeah that's a whole different conversation but yeah so but i i think that's what i was referencing was you know in that kind of that sphere of like potentially IDW light or mm. or people that are you know more centristy politics mm. and more inclined to give unnecessary charity mm. towards IDW figures that are quite harmful and especially Sam Harris right mm-hmm. and I know similarly that you have been like very openly critical of people you know like pra- praising Sam for. Uh, being critical of Brett Weinstein because mm-hmm. you know, as you correctly said, it's a very low bar, and mm-hmm. um, so, so that was that was where I was drawing though the like that comment was based on mm-hmm. um, those kind of critiques. Yeah, I think that's uh, you're spot on there. Like you're completely right, but those conversations weren't, I, you know, to be clear, they weren't specifically about one person or another. It was more like no. a type. Right, which is yeah, why yeah, also I, I wanted to keep it more general because I think there are a few of those type of people. So yeah, I didn't want to single yeah. one person out. You know what I'm saying? Some people no, thought I, it was I, specifically about them, which I found bizarre because uh, it wasn't about one person. So... <laughs> Yeah, to, to have no. someone demand to debate me because I was accusing them specifically of something and then bring in their family history with the Holocaust because I made some comment about like how white guys might perceive the bigotry of the IDW in a less urgent manner. So it just was strange to see someone take it so specific towards themselves. Yeah, yeah, and I, to be clear, I didn't for that no, reason. No, you didn't, so like, exactly. I didn't. That, that episode in general, you know, like, I I listened to it, I, you know, uh, we've spoken to Daniel on the mm-hmm. podcast as well, and, it, you know, and he's expressed his criticisms pretty directly mm-hmm. to us, and, uh, like, I, so it wasn't any surprise, right, and I also got that, the like the the criticisms were were you know uh, were clearly broadly dispersed. So there are people that might do some of the things mm-hmm. that you are criticizing, and other people that do all of them, and some mm-hmm. people that don't. And the level of criticism I I took to be variable depending. You know, you're not saying oh the guys on decoding the gurus are Bo Wangard, right? Like I I did not get that uh, uh, parallel, and so. For me, I, I at the time and after, like I wasn't 
deeply offended mm. by the criticism. And I, I think actually we had Daniel on after that episode to kind of specifically address like which you know which criticisms he would or would not level at, at us mm-hmm. um, from there. Mm-hmm. And uh, and he you know he did. I, I think he pretty much directly. Uh, said the things that he thinks that we're weak on and we explained you know as far as we agree or disagree with like some of the points and Mm -hmm. uh, maybe a part that you would share with him is like that because of the focus that we have that we tend to uh, in like uh, he would view it that we don't focus enough on the contextual um, you know the the kind of systemic or or the broader ecosystem that surrounds the people and their connections to like far right um figures and that kind of thing or or potentially even the money right like from like teal Mm -hmm. or sources like that so um and i i i think my response to that point is that uh we we do focus on the rhetorical and, you know, psychological techniques and that kind of stuff, but that we're not blind and nor do we, like, we do try to call out when we see, like, for example, Joe Rogan, a large part of the episode where we were dealing with Joe Rogan was just pointing out that he's a right-wing guy promoting, you know, right-wing hmm. talking points and right-wing conspiracies. And, like, that's not hard <laughs> to detect that it shouldn't even be controversial because like, you know, you can listen to the clip and uh, it's basically like listening to Fox News. And uh, yeah, so I, I, my pushback for Daniel and would still be that like, I think we do call that out. Um, and it, there may be cases where we don't do it enough, um, but but we definitely don't avoid it. Like I've seen some people saying that we would never do an episode on Peter Thiel, and I'm like, yeah, we would. Like mm. you know, we'll we will do Thiel. Mm-hmm. Like I don't I don't know why people would have the impression that because you're secretly funded we, by him. I don't know. We did an episode on Michael O'Fallon already, right? Who is the the kind of uh, evangelical Christian figure mm-hmm. be, uh, behind James Lindsay? Yeah. So. Yeah, I, I think it is important to look at those networks. So if our content has given the impression that that isn't important and people shouldn't be doing it, like, mm. that's wrong because that's not what we want to do. So so insofar as we create that impression, um, that's that's not something that we want to do. Um, yeah. Okay. So, so it's interesting to me that you say Joe Rogan is right wing and that shouldn't be controversial. But I know that you and I have had a few back and forths about whether... Sam Harris is right wing or not? Yeah, yeah. So that's a that's a fair point. And I, I when I, like so when I listened to you discuss with Aaron, for example, on the Embrace the Void podcast, a lot of the arguments that you're making for the case, right, to put Sam in the right wing category, because you know, pretty much, there you could take a Tucker monologue about the woke left mm-hmm. and and sam's monologue and there's very little uh ground between them Mm -hmm. right um and 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 the degree of charity issued towards uh like right wing versus left wing thinkers is also very clearly different and similarly you know i think one thing where i'll say that you've moved the needle in my assessment is in demonstrating you know those things about like uh not being able to identify the problem with Anne-Marie Waters or uh, mm-hmm. Tommy Robinson. Right? I noticed that with Stefan Molyneux, but I, I hadn't known it, like, went that far back, you mm-hmm. know, to mm-hmm. the um, back when you had that interview with him. But it's, so my argument there is probably that uh, my political spectrum of left to right is that... Uh, I probably classify more things on the left and the center left that uh, you and other people would regard as like right, uh, possibly center right, and and going, you know, like for Sam Harris's views on immigration, going far right. But I, my argument for why it probably makes sense to classify 
why I still think... So is great replacement center left? <laughs> no. Okay, no. good, good. So, like, there's... Yeah, that's, these are good things to, to check. <laughs> and, like, so Sam's endorsement... I mean, I, I tried to make this point to him, right? Like, you're worried about the Western demographic shift and the population being replaced. So how is that different from the the great replacement um theory it mm. didn't it didn't really go anywhere but i i think that's completely valid and to say that i lo i would now say like it's a mainstream right mm. position mm. right like the that's you find that on fox news being discussed by tucker but that's because the right has you know as you pointed out earlier exactly. become more extreme recently right it's not a good thing. I'm not, I'm not so just yeah. to be clear, I'm not like, so that makes it okay. You know, it's a moderate right position right, that the right. white people need to be concerned <laughs> about the, right, right. being replaced. But but I I guess the way why I fall down that I still would broadly with with a lot of caveats identify Sam as like a center left person is like if I imagine who if you give Sam the keys to the kingdom, right, and and he was like building a political party or or designing a society, I think that it would very much resemble a like neoliberal center left government with like maybe neocon foreign policies, right? But like, really fiction. though, I mean. Don't you think Douglas Murray, Tommy Robinson, and Anne Marie Waters would be in charge of immigration? <laughs> I mean, yeah. Well, okay, that's that's a fair point. Like, who's going to be his immigration minister? And Douglas <laughs> Murray would be an obvious candidate, which is, <laughs> you know, it's not exactly just a minor point <laughs> that that you know that's that does just push you on the like the the moderate left side so i'll agree i'd, I'd perfectly agree that there are stances and significant ones that sam spends a large amount of time talking about where his sympathy is charitably the center right and and on like perhaps more realistically leaning to the far right. 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 Douglas Murray is someone that I would say is far right in the garb of a center right person. Mm -hmm. Right. He's he, he's doing a lot at very least. He's doing a lot of on ramping for mm. the uh, like the, the really, you know, quite openly far right. And again, has no problem going to Orban's government and that. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so so. I, I'm not. And what about current like um, conversations about race and LGBTQ stuff? Now we're at the point where even conservatives accept gay marriage. Yeah. So what is the current conversation about, and where does Sam fall? Okay, you do. <laughs> yeah, you are. You are rhetorically effective. <laughs> I will say, <laughs> uh, like again, he falls to the center right. I would say in on on most of those topics, uh, but m maybe in the same way that like uh, Glenn Lowry or you know John McWhorter kind of uh, position would be right. And I, I guess the issue there is whether you can regard those as being moderate left and and having those kind of positions or whether it is like right it is it's inherently right and i think you know like persuasion and yasha monk and mm -hmm. the uh the atlantic and and various other figures the, I mean, I think the Atlantic actually is still pretty, like, majoritively left. But um, I I think really? there's... I, I don't know. I, I haven't read that much of the Atlantic. So, I, again, that's probably something I shouldn't say without checking. But, mm. the, uh, yeah, like, the... I, I don't know. I, okay, I actually... I, yeah, I, I don't know enough about the Atlantic to have a assessment one way or the other but my my impression was that it's it's like left leaning but heterodox sympathetic 
Um, Was it David from the editor? I mean, I I'm just trying to think. I know that Graham Wood's article, for example, was published there, right? The one like what ISIS. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wants, but I think like Graham Wood in general is someone that I would identify as like, uh, like a left wing person who is. It, I I kind of view it, and I I know there will be a whole bunch of people that like uh, see this as a distinction without a difference. But like, uh, you know, uh, who's the person that I was just thinking about? Um, God, I okay, right. So like, Glenn Glenn Greenwald, right, right wing. <laughs> Uh, yeah, kind of. definitely now. Yeah. yeah I mean, yeah. there was a point where you could say no, but not anymore. Sure. He's he's a fan yeah. of Tucker Carlson's. He's now a Ruben-esque character, right? That's, yeah. That seems pretty clear to me. Same as Matt Taibbi, right? This is, yeah. this is just to give an idea about my political compass. Uh, now, Matt Iglesias and hmm. Ezra, Ezra Klein, for example— or uh, Matt Iglesias, I would, you know, I would put him that he's leaning in the direction of the, like, Glenn Greenwald and that. But I would still mm-hmm. regard him as, by and large, a kind of centrist person and, and probably center-left on, a, a, like, a whole bunch of political topics. He's not someone I really like, by the way, like Matt Iglesias' takes, but this is just like my political compass of where I'm slightly... Yeah, no, I don't know enough about him to really be able to gauge that. I know that everything I've seen from him seems terrible and IDW-esque, but there might be a bunch of stuff outside that, So, but I can't judge that. Ezra Klein, I I can say more about. Center-left. Right, like a moderate left. I mean, yeah. like Sam uh, regards him as the, uh, you know, the embodiment. Ultra far, far left. That's, yeah. My version of Ezra is like, he's not that far from me in terms of like neoliberal, you know, centrist, hmm. uh, moderate person. But he, he might have like more progressive cultural uh, views. Like the mm-hmm. uh, be more in line there. So like, so that's like, there's there are things where I would say like I know when I find out about you know when I notice that thing about the Washington Times for example right mm-hmm. like there comes a point where you know I think pe- people such as yourself would be like well come on right like publishing in the Washington Times about how we need to, you know, ramp up the defense of Western uh, Mm. values and and so on. And he defends Douglas Murray. And, you know, you can you can lay out a litany of Mm -hmm. examples. And I I don't disagree. You know, like I asked the, the previous part of this conversation illustrated, I think people are right to to highlight all those and the to point out like yeah, Tommy Robinson gets everything right on immigration. Like what? <laughs> but, but so it's it is it is more of a judgment about that. I I'm factoring in that. I think that like a lot of what Sam seems to care about and increasingly spend time on is like promoting a meditation app talking about admittedly far flung and like uh, fairly tech bro solutions to like poverty and that kind of thing but i i kind of view him as you know very very unlikely to vote for anything right in the you know coming uh, decades and that still counts for something for me but i what about I, david from then David is he Trump? not right wing because he voted Democrat? No, he. I mean, he is right wing, but the the difference there is that like he's he's openly right wing, right? So like, it's just self identification then. <laughs> yeah. No, no, it isn't. Oh, no, that's a good point. That's a good point. But like, <laughs> I mean, that David Frum is, you know, a person who's written for conservative news outlets, identifies as a conservative and previously uh, voted conservative. So, like, identifying him as a right-wing neocon 
kind of fits. I guess I get, my argument would be... I, but you know he's way to the left of Sam on several things. I I, ha- I haven't paid enough attention, but I have noticed on a couple of occasions that David Frum has, like, come out, um, you know, with a take that lots of... Uh, IDW people are disagreeing with, which is should tell you <laughs> so, mm. something. Um, but I, I, so I guess I, I I heard Aaron make this pushback, and and I know you already have an answer for it. But I'm I'm going to put the same. But you know, pushback. ultimately, Aaron said he agreed with me on that episode. I know. I know, but okay. Aaron is usually wrong. <laughs> so, you know, oh, okay. that's, that's, uh, <laughs> we just have to factor that in. But um, uh, he, I, I know he did, uh, and I think he does agree with you more than me on these kind of issues. But one point I agreed with him, and I would make like my own version of it, is that do you give room that on the left there is a space for like, neo, like a neoliberal centristy position right which is which does all the things that progressives allege of it you know that it is it is very status quo it is the kind of people that were happy that biden was elected over bernie and you know yeah, of I'm, course regard that as sensible and so if not like and maybe also that position includes for example that they supported the Those people aren't doing great replacement stuff like in my mind Yes. Or, you yes. know, doing the Breitbart black on black crime and, uh, you know, there is no racism anywhere. So. Right. But this is like the, you know, the rationalist community in the same way, right? Like, uh, there's a there's a tolerance and there's a lot of, uh, like, flirting with, you know, and, and there are big segments of that community which are, you know, explicitly, horrifically. Right, uh, you know the kind of uh, what's his name, Manchus Moldbug or um, mm-hmm, Curtis Yavin, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Like, so I'm not. I'm not saying those aren't a big part of those communities. There are, they are, but and that's late star Codex, for example, has done a lot of uh, like flirting with mm-hmm. the. Like when I read his stuff, I often get the impression that you know there's just these lines in it which are not. They're not the main point. You know, there's a 5,000-word essay, and there's just these couple of points in it which are kind of like, what? <laughs> you know, like, the, well, what does that mean? And it kind of hints at something. And I know people re- would regard that as like, oh, you're reading too much and dog whistles and stuff, but I think there is uh, things to no, be concerned about. No, but I think about. it's been pretty well documented about that, the, yeah. uh, the extremism associations. In- yeah, and I, I think it, you know, revolves around the, the way that that community in general, and Sam would be someone that has had similar issues, has a lot of time for the race and IQ to be it. Mm. Um, Very and, left-wing. Yeah, yes. <laughs> well, like, so there is an area where I think, for example, that Sam is, like, incredibly naive, right? Like, in the way... Is it he, really he, naivete, though? Well, is it so, though seriously? Yeah. Well, so that's that's the thing, right? Because like you can say, so does Sam does Sam not know what like Steve Saylor and Charles Murray and so on are on about? But like when he had that conversation with Ezra, right? And when Ezra asked him about, you know, do you know about human accomplishment? What that book is about? Like mm. it was quite clear, Sam has no idea. <laughs> And he, and but he, he he's talk. not interested because he already knows what he likes about yes. him. Yeah, so that that's the point that I this is like my point of of like pushback and disagreement is that like I don't so I don't think Sam is interested in defending the race IQ stuff on the basis of the same thing that like Steve Saylor and and Charles Murray necessarily are. I think Sam's version of it, and lots of people in that space, is that when they say, oh, it's about academic freedom, and it's about the, you know, our ability to deal with taboo topics, like, that, that is what they think it's, it's about. And that means that they become susceptible to the, the right-wing people that will frame those issues in that way. And now, if you ask me, do I think that deep down they think there are racial differences between like the uh, between different races, right? In in IQ ability, 
I, I think, and you deep played down, clips. Deep down. I know. It's, so, you don't okay. have to go very deep. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's clear that they do, right? And, but I, I, I think that the, you know, all the disclaimers that then come out with, like, people like Sam of, of saying, you know, and if that is true, I don't want that to be of any relevance to anything that we consider about, like, any person and so on. I, okay, I think but you, there, it, you do a podcast, you know, analyzing their rhetorical techniques, right? And you yes. also hear what else Sam is saying about race and racism yeah. in the world. So yes. surely you can see the full picture of all that put together. Right. And I, and I, so I do, I mean, I, at least I think I do, but what I don't, the bit that I don't uh, like sign off on or is that I, I think Sam's motivations are not, and maybe you agree with this, are not that he, you know, actually wants to promote a like far right political movement in the provenance. It it is that he wants to like that he thinks politi like uh whatchamacallit academic freedom and the tough discussions of stuff that that's what it's about and it's about the left overreaching and Douglas Murray is just somebody who's very good at puncturing <laughs> like left wing pieties. Like the because but the thing is, do you okay. think that he would want there to be a like a right wing government of the stripe that uh, Douglas Murray or or anybody on the farther right side of the spectrum would want? Like, would Sam want that kind of government? My my assessment of it is that he wouldn't. I think he wouldn't like. He wouldn't like the label right wing. And that is his main problem with that. He doesn't want to be associated with that. Mm. But that is not significant enough uh, difference in actually being right wing and not being right wing to me. If you like you, you, you recognize there's a whole new crop of right wingers that just want to repackage themselves. Like we were talking about how these conversations and these talking points come up again and again and they're repackaged. Yeah. As the exact same things. If you listen to old right wing speeches about political correctness and the fear mongering about the left, um, it's the exact same thing that they're doing now. And Sam, I think, as someone of Muslim background, um, mm -hmm. the things he thinks about immigration, I think, hit me in a more urgent way. No, I get that. So, yeah, yeah, I think he would want a right-wing uh, government in the sense that it would, you know, curb people like me coming. And, mm. and he would say that, no, 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 I am fine with secular Muslims and all of that. And I, I've been advocating for, you know, ex-Muslims should be the first ones that we should take. But I'm sorry, you don't actually, when you're looking at all this from the top, no one is going to dig deep enough to see how deeply someone believes and how deeply someone doesn't believe. You know, mm. I can be ex-Muslim all day, but when I am traveling, I am treated like every other Muslim. Mm. You know, we have to leave earlier because we know we'll get put, pulled out for random checks and then they'll see, yeah. the, you know, that we've lived in Saudi Arabia, born in Saudi Arabia and things like that. Like, like it, traveling is a huge hassle for us. And trust me, I have zero beliefs in God or Islam and it doesn't matter. You know, my name is sure. Muslim and my association with Saudi Arabia is very Muslim. And so, yes, I think that Sam would want, like, he's talked about, you know, when Ted Cruz was saying that we should only take Christian migrants and have, like, religion tests, he was saying that that was perfectly fine. When, yeah. you know what? Like, Muslim migrants fleeing from that area are in just as much trouble because they're fleeing, like, ISIS. And to ISIS... Anyone that is not practicing the way that they want is a non-believer. Yeah. 
That, so there's a there's a couple of things there. Like one thing I would say, and I, I'm not using this as like a uh, I'm not drawing a parallel to the experiences and like the the level of severity. But I will say, as a Northern Irish person with a beard, who like mm-hmm. traveled, you know, during and after the troubles are, are mm-hmm. around, I'm very familiar with you know being uh, like stopped and searched and and mm. and uh, like singled out by security forces otherwise i'm just exceedingly unlucky and and uh, <laughs> the, the that kind of thing so i and i uh, i think very much that like uh, muslims uh, the world over took over from you know like the ira as the mm. uh, uh, like the the go to terrorist representations although they were always there in movies Mm -hmm. as well but you know that that's how northern irish used to be seen and kind of you know a lingering cultural thing but um so just to say i have like sympathy (laughs) with 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 that kind of thing happening but the on the other point about like you know the issue of immigration being very salient because of that and that also um there are you know the positions that sam has stick out on on that are not you know they're not center left positions i mm. i take that point and i would also say that you know when i seen his discussion about you know in defense of racial profiling which often mm-hmm. gets mentioned um there were two things that struck me about it one was like the extent to which the expert <laughs> was telling him that his approach was wrong right like they was just saying you know i understand that the intuition is it's like this but that doesn't actually work right it doesn't uh, yeah. we we have experts who have spent their careers doing this. What you're thinking about is what everyone thinks about when they hear this, and it doesn't work like that. And it mm-hmm. didn't matter, right? That, that, that argument had no impact because Sam just continued to be like, well, yeah, but, you know, we know that the white old granny is not going to blow someone up as mm. likely as somebody with brown skin. And, uh, <laughs> it, it, like... As if terrorists can't adjust, right, and recruit, like, they're according well, to what they think is being looked even, for. Even, you know, even with that, like, just the the whole skin uh, being the, the, the judgment of that, like, billions of people. And, uh, mm. yeah, yeah. So, like, I, I definitely... I definitely don't agree with that, and I, 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 and I recognize like the position of that is like right, and uh, I think your point is right about there being a new, uh, a new right, and I don't just mean this in terms of like you know the extreme far right which which exists, mm-hmm. like that becoming more moderate. I mean a kind of more moderate right wing mm-hmm. that is like primarily focused on wokeism and you might put people like Barry Weiss um, mm-hmm. and Glenn Greenwald and so on, right, as as in there. Um, well, put moderate in quotes, but... Yeah, yeah. No, I know. I, I, I agree. Like, you know... Co- moderate co- appearing. Yeah. Um, but but so in, in that case, I'm... <laughs> I'm thinking about, like, where do... It, it 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 my assessment of Sam like is I basically don't deny any of those points like placing him farther on the right and that like he doesn't acknowledge the extent to which a bunch of those positions are tied into you know right wing positions and right wing politics and I think he shares a lot of political views with with Douglas Murray right like mm-hmm. uh, frankly but I I kind of think when it comes to uh, the like m- this this is probably about and i i what you said about you know the salience of the immigration issue to you and and like i think to other people as well and and how that is you know th- that's the thing which has sam has spent a significant amount of time on so it would be fair to weigh that more heavily than say his stance on social welfare systems right or the... no but i can talk about that too this if you want to just talk about one our discussion yeah. a bit rather than talk about everything so this... that he's right wing on yeah true, true so like i would i would say that uh, my my perception is that he would be in favor of social welfare systems in general of like public health systems mm. being introduced in the u.s about uh taxes like increasing taxes 
for the mm. wealthy and some potential redistribution of of like uh, extreme inequality of you mm -hmm. know income in the US and and also that the uh, I like in favor of reforms against gerrymandering in the UK in favor of uh, like renewables and dealing with climate change um, so so in those kind of areas right like the the kind of Left wing. Government. And how much time do you think he spends on those things? And passion. Yeah, a lot, a lot less. But he, I, I will say that like he seems to have been a little bit chastened by what has happened with COVID and Majid and Brett and so on. That I've, hmm. uh, apart from his monologue content, that. He does seem to be spending more time talking with tech bros or philanthropists or, you know, not so many culture war figures in recent months, which, you know, you can't predict a trend from that small of a time frame. But I, uh, especially with the Joe Rogan praise, but yeah, I... Yeah, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good counterpoint to that. But um, I... So and also, mm. if you've listened to some of his conversations with the tech bros, like I'm sorry, I am like an extreme Harrisologist, so I have listened to so much that yeah. uh, uh, you're going to be annoyed that I have an, a response to everything. But um, yeah, some of them are highly anti woke, and a lot of that conversation has focused on comparing like wokeness to you know struggle sessions or I, I mean I can't remember exact words but like just ridiculous you know ridiculous shit like absolutely right wing conversations about how the left has gotten out of hand about how racism is barely to be found and uh, in terms of the wealth inequality stuff there is this shady creepy kind of movement that he's into like the um What's it called? Uh, the effective altruism. Effective altruism, yeah. Yeah, and that, I don't fully trust it because, again, that seems to be like a tech bro-related thing where they decide which causes are worthy and which are not, and a lot of it focuses on not demonizing wealth and, you know, not being mad at uh, Mark Zuckerberg or whatever for being so wealthy and mm. um, this isn't particularly left wing you know there's a lot of criticisms of the effective altruist altruism movement I just I don't you know there's a lot of people that are on the right that also dabble in these types of views you know even with Ruben people used to say that oh he accepts gay marriage obviously that was something he used to throw out a lot and uh abortion and you know you can always pick out little things here and there from even you know Richard Spencer wants health care for all sure so I just don't think that that is enough uh, it, yeah especially when you're having all your anti-left conversations within that yes though I, like so I would say that you know I know there's criticisms of effective altruism and there are certain people like Peter Thiel and whatnot that have you know e expressed an interest in it as well mm. but I I also uh, I've listened to the criticisms I think there's validity to a lot of the stuff that's raised but it it is also the case that you know the uh, those movements have ended up you know donating huge amounts for like projects in the same way Bill Gates has with the Gates Foundation that have that, like I can't regard them as the doing nothing of value when they no 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 that's not what I'm saying I'm just saying would you think that that would make Peter Thiel not right wing no it it, it wouldn't so I but I I think that like the difference between say like a Peter Thiel and a Sam Harris is like Thiel has expressed concerns about letting women vote and 
seems to be in favor of funding people that want you know to create ethno states and uh and what's okay a- okay sam doesn't do ethno states but you know <laughs> yeah, he does great replacement <laughs> and skull shapes it is it is a, a low bar to come over so i i agree <laughs> but like i i that's what i i mean in terms of like i i think that uh, there are people who would draw you know a one-to-one comparison between someone like teal and someone like sam and i i think that muddies the water because they're they're not Mm. similar and so would your Mm. position then be Ina, that like just i'm trying to calibrate this in my head that like basically sam is like maybe on average like uh or or a baseline a kind of neocon right winger and then he has uh, a bunch of views which he spends a lot of time on, which tend towards the far right. Yeah, I can accept that. Yeah, I can. I can see how that, and especially with the political spectrum such as it is, you know, if if you have from mm-hmm. where do you put Sam Harris, and if if Ezra Klein is a you know a moderate liberal, is Sam beside Ezra Klein? Like clearly not. Um, so, but in in all of those occasions, I guess like I'm I'm not strongly, uh, well, when I say I'm not strongly wedded, I guess I don't value my assessment of like where somebody falls on the politi- the political spectrum that highly. I can see the argument that you have and why you would put him there, and I like a lot of the points that you're presenting are convincing and i my i guess like my a concern that i would have and this is in in general a concern that i have about the arguments that progressive people in general tend to make is that if you if we say that like sam harris steve pinker jonathan Haidt, yasha monk barry weiss uh like if we take all of those people and say these are all right wing people uh, regardless of who they vote for, regardless of like stance on taxation, I wish I hadn't included Glenn Greenwald, but <laughs> I put, I'll, I'll, I'll do it. That like, what are we saying then? Like, we are we just saying that okay? So every if that's true, it means that there will never be a left wing government again, because that's the vast majority of the population uh, in any, in, in pretty much all Western democracies. and uh, Really? You think most people are like Barry Weiss? That is grim. Yeah, I, I mean, I think most people uh, don't, are, are like, you know, Bernie Sanders didn't win the Democratic nomination. And the... Uh, like, no, no, no. I think you're conflating a couple of things here. Like, I, it doesn't have to be Bernie Sanders, but I think Barry Weiss overlaps with Fox News and Chris Rufo and James Lindsay far she does. too much. She does. She does. That's not the average like, I, person. I don't want... <laughs> so it's like you're agreeing with me, but you're also <laughs> resisting. I don't... Yeah, I'm you a, know? I, I kind of know, because, like, I don't want... You know, Barry Weiss, I I could spend hours on on the thing. She thinks Chris Rufo is a very like legitimate voice. Person. She thinks Brett Weinstein and Heller Hang are great voices on uh, COVID. Right. Right. Like so. I, right. So, so th- these are not <laughs> people that I have a strong ideological affinity with uh, in 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 so in, in like almost any respect. But I, I guess my argument is that, like, if they're willing to identify themselves on as being on the left and they will vote for left wing candidates in elections and this can lead to left wing governments, I like I'll criticize them for all the things they do and for all the support they give to the right. But it, it counts for something for me. That, and I want the left to win elections. So I, I, if I don't want to be telling those people, go vote for the right. Like, you know, you want to, right? But like, you're not, but you're not like, you just have to recognize that 
there is a new rebranded sort of more respectable rational right right and that is literally what the idw is yes that in my mind but and they don't like voting for the left voting for democrats in the united states isn't like all that left to begin with but it's huge so it's hugely important th- right like of course it's important because what is the alternative <laughs> yes <right? laughs> yeah so i don't think that if you and i in this conversation just have the you know like call a spade a spade that suddenly all these people are deterred from voting for democrats no. I, I i i just think that Having these conversations, honestly, is important, you know? No, I I agree with that, and I I guess... Hey there. Sorry to interrupt the episode. No, don't worry. I'm not here to plug an ad for mattresses or razors or underwear or anything like that. I just wanted to ask that if you do enjoy this type of content and want to support smaller independent creators... Maybe you could consider supporting this show, because without listeners like you supporting it, it doesn't grow, unfortunately, and then I have less time and resources to dedicate to each episode. Imagine all the things I could do with your help. So if you'd like to support the show, head on over to patreon.com forward slash nice mangoes, no eat in mangoes, and sign up today. And then you'll have access to early episode releases, patron chats and AMAs, and occasional art giveaways too. Aside from Patreon, you can support this show by sharing it on social media or by leaving iTunes reviews. And now I will let you get back to listening. I just think that having these conversations honestly is important, you know? No, I I agree with that. And I I guess I I, I see, I take the point that you're making, especially, you know, in in a conversation that's not like what you and I discuss here and where we place people on the political spectrum is going to lead to a massive influx of votes (laughs) for, for, you know, any given uh, political party. But I, I guess the thing that I push back on is like, so... If you imagine that there's a lot of people, right, we know that the Barry Weisses of the world and and to a lesser extent the Asha Monks and so on, that they have significant audiences, right, and they're popular. And Sam Harris is Mm -hmm. hugely popular, right, like Mm -hmm, it got a massive mm -hmm. audience. Now, there are lots of people and and critics, and I'd include you and me in in this camp, who... uh, are, are pointing out these right-wing connections, right? And I've seen people, I hear people very often, uh, like, saying, you know, stop pretending that you're left-wing, you're right-wing. You're, you know, you're a neocon in, like, sheep's clothing. Uh, so you want to identify as moderate left, but you just want right-wing policies. You see that quite a lot. Mm-hmm. And... On the, but, but there are people like that, like a lot of them. There are. It's an, I, I are. I, and I, 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 you know, and we've spent a lot, of, like the past couple of hours talking about a whole bunch of them. So I'm not denying that mm-hmm. phenomenon exists and that you people are right to call it out. But I, I do want to say that, and in particular, those people's audiences in some respect, like the Weinstein's audience or the uh, Peter Burgosian's audience, um, James Lindsay's too far gone, but uh, uh, like, I I think there's a dangerous concern in saying to those people, you're right wing and the like, you're not left, stop pretending. And the right in the reverse saying, Come join us. We are anti woke. The woke are like puritanical. So you're buying into that meme then, where like the left pushes that poor guy into the right and the not, right. But it's not a it's not a poor guy because like there's I think that that shouldn't be something that happens to people, right? I think you like you should just be like, well, no, because I you know I don't want Donald. I don't want to support like Donald Trump just because I got annoyed about an article on emojis, but I. I do want the, like, the reality about human psychology is if one side is telling you that you're not with them, 
and you're not a real member of the in-group. And the other group is saying, those guys are bad, and we might look bad, but we'll, you know, give us a shot, and, and we'll let you in, and we'll be nice, and right. And lo- so many of the IDW people openly talk about, like, the, they're kind of being love-bombed by the right, right? Mm. And it... I think the reality. I feel like they are the ones doing the love bombing, and well, yeah, cases, in some so. cases they are the the people now doing that. But a lot of their journey into that ecosystem comes from you know them reporting. The people on the right are being nice hmm. to me, and the people on the left are being mean to me. And but why do you think that is? That's because they agree with the people on the right all the time, and they disagree with and hate the people on the left. Just like how Sam describes like his left wing critics being extremely dis honest and you know so uncharitable well he does the same shit but he doesn't do it to ben shapiro because you know he enjoys the anti-woke bond that they've got going on yeah he does that's why ben shapiro is like a great example of intellectual honesty to sam harris yes whereas ezra klein is like kkk-esque so the my argument there though is not to argue that like they're right, you know, the, the, like the way that Sam has framed that or whatever is right. But it it's more to argue that, like, I I do think it's important to make it clear that there there can be people who are left wing and that are you know that are, are part of the left who criticize like have criticisms about elements of progressivism or uh, elements sure. of like of of you know the pejorative wokeism like the whenever people point out i don't know wokeism i find as a very right wing it is thing now i mean it is now but now look people can totally have criticisms of the left from the left even from the center to the further left you yeah. know but what you can't do is have sympathies with the far right and with race and IQ and all of that and great replacement and mirror Tucker Carlson mm. all the time and then call yourself left wing. Like, mm. there are limits, there, right? There are. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. There, there are, and I'll say you meet your case quite well <laughs> uh, when, when doing that. So... Yeah, I, uh, I, I think I probably, I definitely agree that if you're majoritively agreeing with Tucker Carlson, that you you have to consider uh, <laughs> that that there might be uh, right wing elements to your worldview, and I, I guess you know in in the view of Sam and other people. Uh, is that kind of view that the the progressive side is basically it's creating an unnecessary division because it, by not allowing critique on the left of the left, it's it's uh, forcing people to go and look you know for Tucker Carlson for criticism for left. But I would also agree that that's not true because there's massive ecosystems that are, you know, just catered to criticizing, uh, like, the the progressive or, or, or woke or that, that kind of thing, which have... Which have right, been- and what do they say about the left? Is the left is eating itself. The left is canceling everyone. Like, when the people on the left do criticize each other, yeah, and it- they criticize that, too. But when they criticize each other, it's like, oh, diversity of opinion. And there is this thing that this is also agreeing with you to an extent like from my point of view you know Keir Starmer and uh, what's his face Biden were the candidates right of the Democratic Party they were the moderate choices and that's who's been selected whereas on the the opposing figures on the right are Boris Johnson and Donald Trump <laughs> so so the yeah. the left being completely extreme and you know completely overrun by the the most progressive mm-hmm. sectors doesn't seem an accurate description of the like the actual political reality. So, yeah, I, you know, I I don't know where 
that it leaves me in terms of the argument. That, <laughs> like that I'm, Well, how about you just think about it? That yeah. will take that. <laughs> if you just give it some I, thought. I will. I will. And I think, you know, you've made your case quite quite well. And I'm sure for people listening as well. So, um, yeah. But, I, you know, it, it never is the case that whenever uh, I'm arguing that Sam is to the center left. It, it was never the case that like, I'm denying that he uh, like has the same opinion as Tucker Carlson when it comes to, you know, woke outrage or that hmm. his inability to detect Douglas Murray's stance uh, signifies something. Um, like I, I agree with all those points that it does. So, so yeah, that's the, uh, I, I definitely will, uh, think about this conversation so uh yeah <laughs> okay so that part went on much longer than i anticipated but uh, i do have i, I want to ask you if you're in a rush because i do have a couple of important points that i want to make before i should probably go you... but i have about uh, 13 minutes at about 20 13 minutes yeah okay i'm gonna try and do it real fast okay all right so my other issues um, I think, well, firstly, just one was summed up by you when you were talking to Sam, is that you yourself um, describe yourself as part of the anti-woke tribe, like part of Sam's tribe, right? So I think that's just a difference of politics. If you consider yourself closer to Sam Harris mm. than, than <laughs> me in politics, then that's not something uh, yeah. we're going to see eye to eye on. Yeah, so I would clarify that, like, whenever I was making that point, I was trying to make Sam re realize that, like, the criticism is not based on that he's dealing with someone from, you know, uh, a, like, an, an Ezra Klein <laughs> extreme far left right, right. person. Uh, he's uh, not far left, but it, yeah. Yeah, or that, you know, that, that somebody who cannot express any criticism of progressive points of view because, like, I, I can't. Like, you know, and I, I, I'm pretty clear, I think, about, like, where my politics are in the, you know, moderate mm -hmm. left. Like, um, so, so my point there was... Like, essentially, that, just to, I was trying to say, you know, I am part of the moderate left, not the progressive left, not the, like, far left. So you should be able to, you know, discuss or have, you know, like, that mm -hmm. I should be the member of your in-group. And if you are in that area, that's what I was saying mm -hmm. more than... I have the, the same concerns that you have about, uh, mm. like, immigration or, you know, racial profiling mm. or uh, any of the other. Though I think I have heard it on your podcast. Maybe not you, maybe your co-host saying that he considers himself politically similar to Sam Harris. And I think that just the uh, inconsistencies are what bo bother yeah, him. Yeah, but I, and I think... Matt so, so to me, that's a very fundamental kind of difference, Yeah, I think. And that's where most of my criticisms come from, right? Like if you're... If Sam Harris, the race IQ, uh, you know, a great replacement type guy is not beyond the pale for you, then that is concerning to me. Yeah. So I, I would say for in my knowledge of Matt's politics is like that. No, he, he wouldn't be OK with those points and he'd be critical of those. Like it's it's more that he is a like a moderate liberal person. So, you know, like in Australia, the political calculus is, is mm. different, the same as in the UK than in the US. But that like. Yeah, that I think like uh, Matt's knowledge of like Sam's politics is is worse than mine. Um, but is hmm. is so I think he's more talking about that 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 he would be you know that like essentially that he would be somebody voting for Biden over Bernie or Keir Starmer over Corbyn hmm. like like that, and that hmm. is something which you know some people regard as beyond the pale um, within the progressive sphere. But, like, I mm. I would hope 
it's a minority. <laughs> um, so right, like so, people that are Sam Harris fans often think that I'm like ultra far left like i guess if ezra klein is ultra far left then i must be way out there yeah. but i'm actually you know i don't think that my politics is even the same as daniel or jack's from idsg right like i'm not that far left you're not so, openly uh in favor of like revolution hmm, no like <laughs> yeah i'm not yeah and so you know, people that think that if you vote for Biden, you're the same as someone who votes for Trump. That's also not me. So, yeah. But then this theme also, I noticed, continues in every episode. Like, I, I guess that you guys are trying to be charitable, right, mm. about everyone that you're discussing. So when you're talking about Gadsad, for example. Oh, uh, yeah. It's very fun and enjoyable to hear people make fun of Gadsad, and I am down for that. Mm. But his sense of humor and his, um, I guess, taking himself too seriously, that's that's not even the tip of the iceberg. Yeah. I, so, like, his associations with white genociders and um, Holocaust deniers whom he calls, like, uh, you know, Viking Queen or whatever, and then... You know, uh, hanging out with Faith Goldie. Mm. That that kind of stuff is very disturbing to me. And I feel that if you are, you know, obviously you guys are seen as, you are academics, so seen as a knowledgeable voice on the IDW. Mm. When you are covering people like Gad, I feel like missing these huge chunks of information mm. is concerning to me because... His yeah. association with anti-Semites and Holocaust deniers and flirting with white genociders and all of that really is an important part of that puzzle. And also with his anti-migrant, considering he's an immigrant uh, from Lebanon himself, yeah, all of that is very important to cover, I think. Yeah, so like part of that uh, is... A limitation of our format because we 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 don't always stick exactly to this, but it depends on how familiar or not we are with people. Like we tend to focus on the particular content that we have, right? And we do reference broader points, but uh, we tend to stick quite closely to what the episode is that we are looking at and like what they talk about. And in many cases. They don't talk about everything, right, in the the content that we cover. No, of course, but if you're decoding a particular guru, don't you think it's important to have all the big chunks of their background, yeah, at least? It, it, like the major chunks? Yeah, it it is, and I think, like, having context is important, but, like, there's, there's two points to that. And one is, like, the God Side episode. Um, I think we spent like quite a significant portion towards the end of it um, when he was talking about Chris Williamson, about Trump and, and engaging in Trump apologetics, like essentially saying Gadsad is a right wing guy and he's he's like claiming to be a liberal, but he's, you know, endorsing uh, like he's basically just giving all talking points about Trump apologetics and this is a really common thing that we see in lots of the idw or so on gurus and they're they're referencing of you know douglas murray and the, a, a similar collection mm. of people so we did mention but don't that, you think the holocaust denial stuff would fit right in with that like it would that's more extreme even yeah it is and so, like those, it is true that like there are there's a possibility for us to miss details like that, and to also uh, like Gadsad, for example, he appeared on Sam Harris, right, and he was talking about immigrants in Toronto, and uh, like that he had hmm. saw. I think it was Montreal. Oh, but sorry, yeah. Montreal. He was yeah. scared of the niqab. Yeah. See, you know better, but uh, yeah, he got scared of the niqab, right, and it, like. And yeah. There were two things there. One was like the uh, the person in the niqab is actually probably the the, the person that is you know, facing a uh, a lot of discrimination and and the like sexist uh, kind of 
system uh, being imposed on them. Mm-hmm. So they, they're a person that you should have sympathy for. In, uh, mm-hmm. And also the claim that, you know, they were now everywhere was just like it was insane. Mm-hmm. Um, but so I was aware of those kind of things. But I, I think that the way we frame it is lo- like not that we are going like we're very explicit that we're not going to for each person do and I don't speak German thing where we we do a deep dive on all of the the person no, no no that's not even what I'm saying I'm just saying that these are major like characteristics about certain IDW gurus, right? And if you're going to couple that with, you know, trying to be charitable at some point, just saying like, oh, God is just like, uh, you know, not uh, all that bad. Sometimes he posts wholesome stuff and he's like a traditionalist uncle or you're not instantly repelled by God, sad aside from his, you know, his stupid behavior on Twitter, it just gives the wrong information. Like, I feel like it's not giving a proper picture. Yeah. And that again, I saw that with the Williamson thing, right? Like, you started off, I think, pretty well in the Gadsad episode saying that, oh my god, who the fuck is this guy? Like, he thinks Gad and James Lindsay are some of our greatest minds, and yeah. like, fucking spot on. But then he comes on, mm. and you guys didn't ask him really much about his content, and I just had a look... Oh, I know. And it is insane. Yeah, yeah, I know. Sargon of Akkad. Like, you know, yeah, decline in the West and attack on men and just like, and did you know he's like a militant atheist too? I just stumbled on a clip um, about that where he was like uh, wanting to bring the Richard Dawkins book onto Love Island or something. So, so there's a the let me respond to the God side and then I'll talk about uh, Chris uh, afterwards. So the with with God's hmm. side, I uh, I think that like yeah, I think Matt it was more charitable to him than I would have been uh, or was on that episode, right? Like I I I pretty much said in response to that that I think God is more nefarious. What God has done are completely in line with the. The kind of, I think, uh, from my understanding of God, and based on what I said in that episode, that's what I would expect people to expect God to do, like to appear with Stephen Molyneux, to, you know, be issuing apologetics for whatever right-wing talking point. And I I agree that, like, Matt's take that he, he's not, you know, that he's just like more a politically incorrect uncle, um, I wouldn't sign off on that. But uh, like I believe he said, he posts wholesome stuff on on Twitter. Wholesome, yeah, which was it, a shocking word, but yeah, <laughs> in, I, in association with Gad. But I, I think a lot of the calibration of that has to be put alongside the people that we usually look at. <laughs> so you know, if you're comparing. Uh, the Twitter feed of or the content of Scott Adams and then Gad Saad in the following week, there might be points where you're kind of like, okay, at least he's not Gad, at least he's not, uh, you know, Scott Adams. But that's, let's look at an incredibly low bar. I know that. But I, mm. I think we then, after each episode, we do uh, like a, a garometer episode right where we do like a follow-up on mm. the and we usually respond in those episodes to feedback that we've got from people if people think we've missed something or we were too light or whatever we we kind of go back and you know try to address it and then uh like include it now admittedly that's the bonus content we don't put that on the main feed unless mm. it's an episode where it seems like we really missed something important and we should um but but we do often address the feedback in those episodes. And I, I think in all the cases, I would also say that, like, what we are trying to do is say, like, here's a way to look critically at, at people's content and try and identify rhetorical techniques and, uh, like, political content that they might not flag up and so on. But what we're not saying is, like, and our, our decoding tells you everything you need to know about that person, and this is a like thorough breakdown. We will miss things. There'll be stuff where we are too generous, or we're you know in some case too harsh, 
and or we're too flippant about something. And it's it's not us trying to say our breakdown is the definitive guide to God's sad. It's more like here's two people engaging critically with God's content, and this is the problems that we notice and the techniques he's using. But it's not us saying, and he doesn't do anything else, and he's not that bad. And uh, no, no, no. But the, I just think if you're talking about God's sad, mentioning his f- very far right stuff just goes hand it's, it's not, not like, hard to locate you mean it's like it, talking about douglas murray yeah it's not something with, obscure uh, without reference yeah exactly it. exactly so i just worry that your audience might not be getting the full picture when it comes to people like gad or even just you know like this williamson guy like i didn't know who he was i was introduced mm. to him by your podcast and i wouldn't know if I didn't go and yeah. look him up. I wouldn't know just how horrendous he is. Well, so one thing I would say about and uh, on Chris. Uh, so I take I, I take the point that like the, there's there's the possibility for episodes that we do to cover people to like, you know, to potentially go too soft on them or to not mention things that are important, and we could avoid that by like more research on the people, um, and you can always do. More research, right? And I'm I'm not going to the defend that we always that we always manage that, but I I think that by and large we do reference when people have like those kind of connections that when we know about them, but but we we will miss them, and it, it's it's a limitation, and maybe mm. it's something that we have to be clearer about that you know that people shouldn't take the thing that we're describing as like. Uh, this, you know, just highlighting much more clearly that we're talking about this specific content, and when we haven't done a whole heap of research mm. to make that clear, because um, it, it's the case with that. Like I've never. But this wouldn't require a heap. Just, yeah, just yeah. to clarify this, would, and neither yeah, would the but, Williamson thing. Like it, literally any, like five no, minutes. No, I, I agree. But I will say, like on. you know, <laughs> I've just said that you know. I've never consumed Cat Sad's content willingly. And it's, it's, it's not so. I, mm. I, Neither have I. I. I just, I'm not looking forward to that if someone was saying, you know. But I, I, I take the point. I take the point about, you know, it doesn't require much digging. And I'm being critical of Sam for the same thing. So it's it's a reasonable mm. criticism to make. Mm. And it, it, it'll be undoubtedly be the case that there are figures that we've failed to, you know, highlight things which are important. Um, and but on Chris Williamson specifically, so we did the episode. We were very like pretty harsh in passing when him with Gad had, and he asked to come on and discuss it, right? And then in that interview, mm-hmm. I agree, and I would say the majority of the people that listened thought that he came across quite well, right? Like he responded well to the the issue about like him giving a softball interview to Stefan Molyneux, and he you know, appeared to be wanting to avoid uh, similar mistakes in the future. Mm-hmm. And I was I was kind of pleased about, you know, we should be willing to be happy, right, if somebody was willing to do that. If, you know, Ruben had been willing to listen to the critiques and then, like, stop. Yeah, but not if all their content is like that, though, right? It seemed like, oh, he made this one mistake and now yeah. he knows better and he's going to be more careful. But so this is the part where I disagree because in that interview, yes, we had a, a, a discussion with Chris and like raised the points. I think didn't I didn't withdraw any of the points about you know, uh, like the the softballing Stephen Molyneux being used like the help promote his agenda or uh, you know loads of stuff about the IDW apologetics and that kind of thing. And Chris Williamson gave the presentation from his side and kind of you know highlighted the point about potentially closing down access to more moderate voices um, from a critical coverage, which I I hadn't considered and seems a reasonable point at least to consider about the potential, you know, to increase people becoming radicalized by them not being able to speak to more moderate voices. Just that had not really crossed my mind because I don't think we were that influential and also that's like, you know, two layers removed. Mm. But I think it's a valid point regardless of like uh, his content. But the thing which 
So Chris's content since then, I haven't, I hadn't paid that much attention, but I did notice, you know, that he interviewed James O'Keefe. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, that one too. Yeah. That he had Sargonoff a cad on, and that he, uh, I can't remember who the third one was, but there was a- like, if you had just mentioned this in the beginning, that you know these are his recent guests, and I think it would like give a better picture of who he is. Yeah. Although at that time he hadn't. Oh, he hadn't. Like those those guys were that they, they came after the interview, right? But there's now, still plenty more also behind. There were there were, but so his point then was kind of like if you look at my recent guests, I don't have those people on, right? Like I've moved more into moderate guests, and he had at the time that he appeared, but uh, since he hasn't, and now, so. The point would be, and I think this is a criticism that people like our our subreddit noticed uh, this, and they were they were disappointed, right? And they were like saying things, saying, uh, "Oh, he, you know, he claimed to be reformed, but like clearly he hasn't, right?" And they um, now, whenever we uh, saw the 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 comments, and you know, I, I'm not, we're not keeping up with all of the gurus that we've covered like we we didn't even cover mm-hmm. Chris, but we we ended up having a conversation with him so i saw that and saw the sargon interview saw the um the whatchamacallit interview the the all of the people that were talking about the terrible people and yeah. uh, i haven't haven't watched them the, the in full so i i i don't know if he's been more critical but i don't get the impression from what people are said that he he was, but uh, one we we've already discussed it on an episode that we recorded, uh, like an interview with Liam Bright. So we've mentioned it, we just haven't released it yet. Mm. And we we were uh, like we I do think it's important to update, right? If people have been given mm-hmm. an impression and you want to be clear, so I mm-hmm. do think that's important to do. But the the second point I would make, and I and we do make this point in the in the interview we did, that like this is a really good illustration that when we had that conversation, we had a nice conversation, right? Like a kind of polite, friendly conversation. And uh, Chris came across well. He said all of the things that you would want someone to say about being mm-hmm. repentant and whatnot. But after it went, like Matt and I were under no illusion that it's very likely that his content will now change. Like, we didn't think that. We thought mm-hmm. it might do it, but it might not. And the, the the likelihood is, you know, he's pandering to a specific audience, and he won't do that. So when I saw the things that he covered, yeah, it's, it's like it's disappointing, but not surprising. Um, and I think that maybe some people in our audience and other people were like, well, but but you, the, this is a really surprising turn, and it, it isn't surprising to me, and it doesn't mean that the criticisms he put at us about, like, that sometimes we're too glib, or that sometimes we might shut off people from more moderate voices, like, those are still fair points. It doesn't mean his content's good, and the message that we didn't intend to send was that, we now sign off on Chris Williamson and his future content as a good person. Like, we didn't say that. And we yeah. we clarify that. We, we will clarify that on the episode that we're releasing, like, in a week or two, very explicitly. So I do think it's important. Hmm. Well, that, that's good. Yeah, that, you know, you address these kind of things, especially where... I'm, so I'm not saying... Oh, we don't have any culpability because we didn't, you know, explicitly endorse him. You can still give the Im- yeah. impression to your audience. Well, yeah. But uh, I think you should be able to address that. But I, I also want to chastise people. And I think it's possibly a good lesson to learn that, like, having a nice conversation with someone doesn't mean they're, you know, you sign off on them or that their ideas are good. Like, I, I, I know you, you into or did a conversation with destiny right like a couple of years oh yeah oh my gosh yeah like he's a piece of shit absolutely (laughs) yeah and it doesn't mean like i i think anybody who knows your content would know that like but chris your conversation was not so far off from his terrible like you know what i mean this is years ago and i will clearly say destiny is a piece of shit i didn't even know 
uh, that much about him. Uh, but I, what I looked into at the time, he seemed definitely not like Chris Williamson, but now he might very well be. Yeah. I, I don't know enough about the, like the, what's his face destiny or, you know, it's like when he did things and whatnot. I like, I, I don't know enough about him or the Twitch streaming ecosystem. Like, yeah. in general. like he seemed to me to be, you know, anti-racist at the time and just, uh, you know, debunking right wing people. But now he seems to be the opposite. <laughs> uh, so people do change. And I absolutely don't think that, you know, if you have a conversation once with someone when they seem reasonable that you endorse everything that they ever do yeah especially if you're willing to follow up and clarify but i just think that at the moment that you conversed with him he already seemed kind of gross and it just wasn't made clear that's all yeah and it just that's just a a thread that i think continues and i think that that is my perception also because of our slightly differing politics like to me mm. you are an idw critical podcast that is palatable mm. to the idw right so you're not creating as much friction with them and there is certainly a purpose uh for that that you can probably sway more people that are leaning in that direction but also i worry that if you sway people that are enjoying dunking on Eric Weinstein into Chris Williamson. Yeah, so that that would be like I I I think that would be a, le- a legitimate concern but I I would I I would hope and we we will make it like explicitly clear because we we reference it in the episode that like that's not what we are ever that's not what we intended with that episode and that's not what we uh like we've no problem saying that we are not endorsing this the, the, that person's content. Like we're mm-hmm. and we're only conceding the points that we think are valid and like that I still think are valid. But I I think that the um, there is uh, and I I'd, I'd also like I I think we talked about this with Daniel and pushback as well. But like uh, anybody you included, I'm sure we'll get like, you know, uh, like a selection bias responses from people who listen to your content and have, you know, a positive response. You get critical stuff as well, but you get Mm -hmm. a lot of positive thing. And we've got a lot, like a lot of feedback from people who were going down, uh, you know, Mm -hmm. quite, quite dark uh, spirals or into content of really exploitative people and that they're, their comment to us, and yes, this is like very self-serving and it's a selection bias, but their their comments are kind of universally that they they could they didn't like the criticism that they heard from you know devoted critics, and um, mm-hmm. uh, because they they felt it was coming from a place of ideological opposition, and then they did listen to our critique, they didn't like some of the stuff that we were saying, or you know the sarcasm and so on, all the same things you get, but that they. They then, you know, listen more, and I, and we get a lot. We do get a lot of people who say, you know, thanks, and uh, um, I managed to, you know, I now recognize this, and I kind of, uh, or that they have, you know, uh, family members or friends that they've shared the podcast with, and I, I do think that we, we do something. I'm not saying like, you know, we're making the world better or that kind of thing. I just mean <laughs> saving civilization. Yeah, we're we're not doing that, but we are telling people you gotta look critical at at stuff and that yeah. you know conspiracism and 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 that can be very appealing. And I I think they're acknowledging the appeal and the kind of fun aspects that a lot of really terrible people use in their content. It's important because if the like breakdown is just like a kind of just a, a complete repudiation like those people already tend to have pre-built explanations for why people will denounce them as nazis and why people will hmm. uh you know they'll just say but like i'm not denouncing them as nazis but no I'm not, and i'm not talking i'm not saying that they're wholesome and i agree you know not all that bad and all of that stuff right no 
Yeah, agreed, agreed. And I, you know, so I, I'm not, I don't mean to put that like you into that category of just saying, well, everybody is, <laughs> is a Nazi. Um, and I don't think many people are that the uh, like non nuanced about things. But I, I guess uh, I, and I do take the point about that you have to be, you have to be careful, especially as the platform increases, like audience mm -hmm. sizes grow and stuff like what you're endorsing or the message that you're sending. And, I'm not saying that Matt and I are always have always got that right uh, in our in our content, but I think if there are people listening to our podcast week in and week out, it it's very unlikely that there are people that are you know going to join far right groups or not know this white nationalism. No, creepy. but they could become more friendly with say Arrow and Quillette. Yeah, yeah, they could, but I I think, you know, our critiques of, like, Crillette and Aereo uh, are also, like, it's I have no problem pointing out that Crillette is right-leaning and have had various arguments. I mean, Toby Young was an editor there. Bo Weingard is a mm -hmm. repeat contributor. So there's... I, I, I know that my tolerance... Um, for people that are like that are right leaning, and I would put a bunch of them like towards the center right. Although I acknowledge that a lot of them also have sympathies that you know include more far right stuff uh, mm -hmm. is greater than uh, other people, and I I think you do have to be careful there. But we, from my calculus, we're on the right side of that. Um, we're not ever going to be in the position of accidentally endorsing somebody who, you know, is is channeling people into the far right. Like the episode with Sam Harris that we had, I think it's really clear <laughs> the, the differences in judgment that we have. And I don't think anyone listening to that would have the view that, like, Sam and me are on the same page when it comes to... Well, when you say that you're in the same tribe, the same anti-woke tribe, then it could happen. Yeah, but I mean, in the context of that conversation, it's still clear that there's huge differences about like the ability to recognize things. And I yeah. would... If I'm mischaracterizing Sam, and as I said, <laughs> I will think about the, uh, you know, on it more. <laughs> but if I'm putting a center left group and including Sam within it, my point there is just, you know, the, you, you can be on the center left and you can be hugely critical of Tucker Carlson and Douglas Murray, right? Like without being some ultra woke, like the far right for yeah. progressive fringe. Like you, there's no, there's no issue there. So the, it's, it's kind of that. I don't want, uh, I don't want it to be framed that the only, ex, the only positions are possible are like ultra, ultra progressive, hard left, you know, society needs a revolution. There's no ethical consumption under capitalism uh, versus moderate right and far right like there's it seems that there's a space there <laughs> that, that mm -hmm. is missing that's really important so when in that conversation with, with sam and with other people i guess our hope although it's not explicitly a political podcast is just to say that you know that you can be like moderate left and still critical of of these things like there's there's no contradiction there mm -hmm. um but yeah uh, so, I don't know. I, I'm, I, I, I think there. I'm definitely not claim, someone who would claim that I get all the judgments I make right about things. But I, I think broadly speaking, that where there's a wrong impression or something like that, um, I'll do the same thing that I did with the article I published about the mm -hmm. Cambridge Analytica. Like we can, we can explain the position on the podcast and we should where mm -hmm. people have got the wrong impression. But um, yeah, 
Yeah. Yeah, well, look, uh, it's uh, we've had a four-hour conversation on this, and I think we could easily do another four hours. <laughs> but uh, I know that you have to run, and it's almost midnight over here, so yeah. my voice is starting to sound <laughs> weird now. I appreciate the the conversation, Ina, and, and, and like I, I think we do have you know some disagreements and and like. And there are legitimate criticisms to be raised, but I, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, I find think that uh, it shouldn't be that hard <laughs> for for people to to be able to hear criticisms or you know mm -hmm. th like discuss that and and that be not regarded as hugely beyond the pale. I don't want to sound like a friggin' IDW people, <laughs> you know. Talking about the beauty. <laughs> well, look, I'm not going to lie. Sometimes that rational centrist bro does seem to come out, but uh, it does. I mean, it's, it's this there. is it's... why you're more palatable to the IDW as an IDW critic, right? Like, there's a reason for that, I think. And it's not like there are advantages to it, but I just worry about it going the other way as well. So. You know, that's right. We can go in circles, but thank you so much for giving me four hours of your time. I think we can. Uh, I can probably do two episodes out of this. I probably will have to because I will <laughs> yeah, not release a four-hour episode. <laughs> you're you're kind of people. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I enjoyed it. So uh, yeah, no, it was it was fun chatting, and uh, maybe we'll chat again sometime and pick this up. But I think. Uh, yeah, like people often want to talk about how we're similar. Like I get that comparison a lot, and it just I I just wanted to lay out our differences. I think there are some fundamental differences. So, like I remember how people would compare me to like um, Sarah Hayter or whatever because we're both ex Muslims, <laughs> and it it would annoy me. Not that you're like like that, <laughs> but yeah, um, I just want to make clear that we have some differences. No, I, I, I think people will be able to tell. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and the only, the only last bit of pushback I'll, I'll give uh, is that while I definitely think you know, there's, there's part of the internet debate, bro, uh, within me, which is regrettable state of affairs and probably just my character for you know the my life but um <laughs> it, it's it's also true that like you are are someone that has no issue with you know critically debating people and kind of arguing your position <laughs> very strongly are you are so, you calling me an internet debate bro look i'm not gonna deny it there's, I, a, there's a bit of that yeah uh, i mean of course there is you did a pretty good job, yeah. <laughs> you know, in this episode. So I'm, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. You know, glass houses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. For sure. For sure. I, I, I enjoy uh, debate certainly, and I used to be a yeah. atheist. So come on, that's going to come out sometimes. <laughs> that's but, that's um, right. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks so much. Well, it's been a pleasure. Take care, and uh, I will try to release this. Oh, mammoth editing job as soon as don't, possible. No problem, but don't feel any obligation. I'm I'm pretty relaxed about these things, so I won't be pressurizing you. <laughs> I will be censoring all the parts where you look good and <laughs> saying that you yeah, threaten that's... me with violence. And uh, yeah. yeah, I wouldn't expect anything less from someone so crazy and unhinged. So it's that's uh, right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Take care. All right, bye-bye. Thanks for listening to another episode of Polite Conversations. You can support this podcast by sharing the shit out of it, making some noise about it, or contributing via Patreon. Patreon.com forward slash nice mangoes. No Ian mangoes. Also, you can follow me on Twitter at nice mangoes. If you want to make a one-time donation instead of a monthly Patreon one, you can do so via PayPal nicemangos.blog at gmail.com Remember, no E in mangoes. If you've got an interesting story and would potentially like to be a guest, you can email me there too. 